My name is Haley, and this is my Lego engraver. So it's a desktop CNC mill that I purchased, but we've made some extensive modifications to here at Protospace. So let me show you what it does. So as you can see, I have engraved the word engraver onto this Lego brick. So I use two pieces of software in order to engrave my bricks. Uh, the first one is the one that comes with the mill, so it's the, um, the CNC controller software. And I run it on a Panasonic Toughbook, which is very forgiving when I drop my laptop on the way to shows, as I often do. Uh, it's also nice because it's a touchscreen. So you can see all the buttons here. And this software controls the mill and sh tells the spindle where to go. I'm running G-code, which is a fairly typical uh, way of controlling any kind of CNC uh, machinery. So the G-code all is shown here. And when you run a cut, it actually scrolls through. And G-code is coordinates. So it's, uh, every line is a new set of coordinates. And it's telling the bit to go from here to here to here to here. And that's how you're drawing your shapes. Um, over here on this side, it demonstrates your cut path, so you can see where it's going to cut and in what order, and as it's actually cutting it, you can keep track of how far through you cut your R. Down here, it gives you a progress bar, it lies, it'll tell you that it's, you know, 10% done and it's actually 50 or vice versa, but it gives you at least an idea. And then we've got different um, controls all around, so you can see here I can move my Z axis, which is up and down. I can move my X axes, which are left and right, and I can move my Y axes, which are forward and back. And I've already set my Z to be perfectly in the center of my Lego brick, so when I need to go back there, I can just click go to Z, and instead of having to precisely find my starting point, it will go back there automatically. So while it's doing that, you can't do anything else so that you don't mess up any of your settings. Uh, we can manually control a spindle on and off and control our feed rate as well. All of these can also be controlled through um, the G-code, so it's just an extra way to fine-tune it after you've imported your file. So I'll show you importing a file here. So I've just opened my file software and it's uh, a .tap file, which means G-code. So when I import it, it comes in over there and all I have to do now is click Run and it will start to tell the machine where to go. So in terms of creating my bricks, I use uh, a free software called F-Engrave to generate the text, um, which generates the G-code that I import into the controller. So down here, I can type whatever I want. Uh, how about we'll do a proto space brick. Calculate it. I can look at the size, make sure it's all going to fit. And it looks upside down on my screen because it's actually milling upside down in my mill. So. We will save this. It has to be a .tap file, as that is the correct file format. And then when we go in here, we can close that file, open the protospace file, and you can see it's all loaded up and ready to go. So we've made many modifications to this mill at Protospace to take it from a woodworking uh, CNC mill, which is what it was originally destined for, to turn it into the brick engraver that you see today. Uh, the first modification that we needed to make was a way to hold the Lego bricks. So not only did it need to hold them securely, it needed to hold them very accurately so that we would always engrave from the right spot. And Lego being already extremely accurate to start with, we decided that the best way to do that was to make an aluminum Lego brick. So if you look at the mill here, there are actually four uh, aluminum studs that are exactly the same stud size as a stud on a Lego brick. C1, 
so when we clip them in, it's actually got excellent clutch power, exactly the same amount of clutch as you would have with two normal Lego bricks sticking together. So I can clip that in there, and to make sure that the brick doesn't come off at all, because as the bit moves uh, this way, it potentially drags it off the studs, you've got these two destaco clamps that just clip nicely down in there. They're set to the right depth to hold it on firmly, but not to squish the brick too far. And that's all there is to it. So now it's perfectly centered, perfectly precise. The mill goes back to the same spot between every single cut, and that way we're always oriented right off the center bottom of the brick. So that was the first modification we had to make. And that was uh, one of the protospace members here named Danny helped me do that. So we designed it together, and then he used his uh, CNC mill knowledge to make this on t the Tormac, which is the large CNC mill that we have here at protospace. So basically the big cousin to this machine. The second thing that we've done is we've also made a custom collet for the machine. So it came with a collet that took four millimeter cutters. Those are really hard to find and not very common and there wasn't enough availability in terms of the types of cutters I wanted to use in order to cut the bricks. So we've machined a new one that'll take a 1 8 inch shank. So now I've got a wide variety of options to me in terms of cutting profiles. Uh, I've experimented with end mills, ball mills uh, and V points. So different types of bits cut plastic differently. Some of them won't chip clear very well and you'll get fuzzy cuts. Some of them seem to melt it more, which also results in fuzzy bird cuts. So it's been lots of trial and error to find the correct bit. You know, you've kind of dialed it in now. So you can see when you look at a brick, it's a very clean, precise, easy cut with no shavings. So once a brick is cut, it comes out of the machine and it's painted with a kid-friendly, non-toxic <laughs> acrylic paint which will bring out uh, the letters so that you can see them clearly. So the brick engraver was really conceived at Protospace. We were sitting around talking about our next projects one day and somebody said, hey, have you ever tried engraving a Lego brick? And I said, yeah, actually, you know, I haven't tried it, but there's people that have businesses doing that. I've totally heard of it, but I don't have the equipment to do it. I don't know how. And he's like, okay, well, I've got the equipment and I know how, so I'm going to teach you. So after spending some time learning with him and learning the ins and outs of G-Code and Mach 3 and a whole bunch of different uh, uh, machining and CNC knowledge that I never had before, uh, all of a sudden I had this business engraving Lego bricks. So I've learned more and more over the last few years, ended up purchasing my own mill that I could make lots of uh, improvements to, which we've done and we explained before. And now I go to shows, I engrave bricks for kids, and I've got a full-fledged uh, business engraving bricks, and that was all born out of a, hey, I wonder conversation that we had here at Protospace. <laughs>